Welcome to POE with Mr. Hurd. Today we're going to talk about inclined planes, wedges, and screws. Let's start with an inclined plane. Uh, for instance, the mechanical advantage of this inclined plane is 4 to 1. What's that tell us? It tells us that uh, we're going to have less force, but we're going to travel more distance if we use this, and we're going to get the same amount of work done. With mechanical advantage, if it's greater than 1, it's proportionally less force, and again, proportionally is key. It's all a proportion. There'd be less force if it's greater than one, um, but a greater distance. If uh, the mechanical advantage is less than one, it's going to take greater force, but it'll be less distance. Can you think of a time when you'd want when it when you'd want it less than one? Now, ideal mechanical advantage is the same formula when we're talking about all of these different simple machines. IMA, ideal mechanical advantage, is the distance of the effort over distance of the resistance. Always. It hasn't changed. And same with the actual mechanical advantage. If you watch all of the, the, the earlier videos where you learn how to calculate this, it's the same formula throughout for every single simple machine. Uh, actual mechanical advantage equals the force of the resistance over the force of the effort. And if you notice, resistance is on top in AMA, and in IMA, resistance is on the bottom of the fraction. That might help you remember. Now, an inclined plane basically allows you to take a heavy object and move a greater distance with less force. And here's an example of calculating the distance effort over distance resistance, which is the um, ideal mechanical advantage. Here's a new formula that makes it easier when using an inclined plane. It's the same form as this, it's just putting different numbers in the formula. For instance, for IMA now, with the plane, you use L, which is the slope, the length of the slope. In this case, it's 150, divided by the height which is 4 feet. So it's 15 divided by 4, and you end up with 3.75. If you round up, it ends up to be 3.8 to 1 is the ideal mechanical advantage. And again, there are distances that we're working with. It's, we just changed it to the length and the height, and the length being the slope. Now, the wedge is very similar. Uh, it functions as a moving inclined plane. You, attach, you put a force here, and it transfers the force in two different directions. It's a thin, tapered edge used for splitting and raising heavy bodies. So here's an example. So how do you do the ideal mechanical advantage when you know this is the formula? Well, with a wedge, it's a little bit different. Take the length of the wedge and divide it by the height. Again, it's the distance of the effort which is, in this case, 10. It's not this edge. It's the perpendicular length divided by the height, which is 3. The IMA, 10 divided by 3, 3.33. It's 3.3 to 1. Now, how do you get AMA with the wedge? Really easy. Remember, it's forces. Same thing. Nothing changes. So you have the force of the resistance, which you have to understand is these two side forces, that's the side, that's the resistance, and the force of the effort is how hard you're hitting that with a hammer, say you're splitting a log, and the answer comes out to be 700 divided by 250, your answer is then 2.8 or 2.80 to 1. And efficiency, check it out, same formula we've been using the whole time. Uh, once you punch in the right numbers, the 2.8 over the 3.33 from the previous slide, because we calculated IMA to be 3.3 to 1 here, we drop that into here, we put the 2.8 that we got from here on top, we end up with 84%. If your number is larger than 100%, you probably have these two numbers backwards. Be careful with that. Think of a screw as a wedge wrapped around a cylinder. And you'll understand that as you wrap it, there's a distance between the wraps, and that's very similar to the threads. So that's called pitch. 
And what do you use a screw for? It changes rotary motion into linear motion. Uh, you use it as fastener. It's a screw. It's, you put a nut and a bolt together, and you can hold things together. It has a very large mechanical advantage, uh, but there's also a, a large amount of friction loss in that as well when you use it. How do you identify a screw? It's pretty easy. Here's the thread information over here. This thread information says that this is a half 13 NC screw, and that's how you buy uh, screws and bolts. This happens to be a bolt, and this bolt is a half 13 NC. Half, the first number, is the diameter. The second number is the threads per inch, or the pitch, which is the distance. That's actually the distance between the threads. And NC is the thread description, coarse or fine. This is national coarse. So it's a half inch diameter, 13 threads per inch, national coarse. To get the effort arm distance, it's the radius of the screw. And the pitch is the distance between the threads. And it's also the linear distance traveled by one rotation of the screw. All right, so this is good to know. If 13 threads per inch, then the pitch is 1 13th of an inch. So how far will the screw with 13 threads per inch move in a linear fashion if turned one full rotation? The answer is 1 13th of an inch. So now knowing that, we can go ahead and figure out IMA, AMA, and efficiency for a screw. Uh, note that with IMA, it's a distance over a distance, effort over resistance, just like everything else. But with a screw, we can change the DE and the DR into something a little more functional that we can deal with. And what we do is we say IMA is equal to the circumference of the screw divided by the pitch. And to get that, all we have to say is 2 pi R divided by P. So that's how we calculate the IMA for a screw. Be careful because remember, this is the radius. What is the IMA of the screw above if effort is applied by an 8 inch wrench? So you take the wrench, which is the radius, plug it into your equation, 2 times pi times 8 divided by 1 over 20. Please be very careful using your calculator to do this. Um, you have to do order of operations. You have to multiply these out, get an answer, divide these, get an answer, take the top, divide it by the bottom in order to get this for your correct answer. Try that on your calculator and see if you get 1,005.31. Actual mechanical advantage is force resistance over force effort. We know that from before. It, it doesn't change. It's the same here with a screw. So what is the AMA of the screw shown? Well, here's a screw. It's the same. It's a quarter 20 NC. Quarter inch diameter. We're using an 8 inch wrench and we're putting 35 pounds of force on it and we're getting 1,200 pounds of force out of the screw. So it's force resistance, 1,200, divided by force effort, 35. The answer is 34 to 1. And how do you get the efficiency? We got the IMA from the slide before. So it's 1,005.3. And we put that into our equation on the bottom. And we just got 34.2 for the AMA. We put that on the top and multiply that by 100, and it's only 3.4% efficient. If you have any questions about AMA, IMA, or efficiency, please look back to the other presentations, the, the other uh, simple machines, and you'll see math done with every single one of these equations.